Well, I don't know how many of you have thought about pivotal moments in your life. And it could be as simple as maybe someone in your family's gotten sick, you've gotten sick with the flu, and you have that moment where it turns the corner, that you feel better, you're on the mend. That's a pivotal moment. Or what about if you get pregnant, have a child? When you learn of that news, that's a pivotal moment in your life. Things have changed. You see things differently. You value things differently. Maybe in your career, you get promoted or your title changes. It changes how you act, how people see you, how you're supposed to move forward. Or maybe perhaps just you go on a trip somewhere and you didn't know until you got there how God would meet you there you'd have this life-changing moment, and you'll never be the same once you leave that place. That's what today's journey is about. This last Sunday after the Epiphany, it is a pivotal moment. And I love what we have for our prayer, the collect for today, because it says that God has been revealing himself, and throughout the season of Epiphany, that's what it's about, God revealing himself to us. And today he's revealing his glory upon the holy mountain with this Transfiguration Sunday that we had from Luke's Gospel. So he's revealing himself yet again to us if we can open our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive it and to see it. And then we say, grant to us that we, that we're beholding by faith the light of his countenance, we are looking for how God's revealing himself, that we may be strengthened to bear our cross. Because that's where we're in the turn. We're now going to shift our focus towards the cross and journey with Christ into Lent. And as we do so, be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. So I don't know how much you spend time with the colics in our prayer book, but they are beautiful. And they speak to us and help us to shape our lives to be more like Christ. So we have a pivotal moment before us today. And how does God want us to respond to that? So I think in, first it's important to continue to dwell. It's still epiphany today. And so we still need to dwell in his glory. And we have the Exodus reading and the new Second Corinthians reading that speak to that. Talk about how Moses' face shone with the light of God's glory as he encountered him, as he went up on the mountain to meet God. It says the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. I don't know about you, but I wish I could have been there. I wish it could have been Moses, actually. But maybe just one of the others that were waiting at the bottom of the mountain for him to come back. And then for his face to glow and to wonder what has happened. Now, he was given the commandments from God, all that the Lord had spoken with him, they had already received these once, but here was a message again, another reminder that God is speaking to his people, that Moses' face is shining. Now, it tells us that they were a little afraid, not sure what to think, but I'm always a glass half full kind of person, and I'm always looking for the positive. How does God want us to receive this? What can we learn from this? So if someone's face is shining before me, and I know that God has spoken to them, what can I learn from that? Not be afraid of it. We don't know exactly all that they were thinking, but we do know about this veil. And I grew up for many years in reading this scripture and wondering, what do we need to learn about this veil? Did it confuse anybody out there? What is this veil all about? And it just keeps talking about Moses had finished speaking with them. He put a veil on his face. And I first say, well, why did he do that? But they were afraid. They didn't know. So he has a veil on his face to cover up that shining. But it's revealed any time that he goes into the presence of the Lord. He takes the veil off. He's there to be fully present to the Lord. And then as he communicates what the Lord's will is for the people, the veil is off. He's communicating what God wants for them. He wants for them to follow the commandments, to obey them. So the veil is an important thing for us to remember and for us not to have it to find a way for it to be removed. And that's what Paul is speaking about to the Corinthians. He said their minds were blinded before. And even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies in their heart because they've not found Christ. 
But here's the verse of importance. Verse 16 from chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, and that's what we're being asked to do today, when you turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now some wonder, well, how do I do that? And it's about constantly, daily, hourly, putting our focus on God and his wishes. I don't know how many times you get up in the morning and you just start going about your day. You start brushing your teeth, combing your hair, whatever you need to do, feed a pet, feed a child, and then you keep going. But we need to turn to the Lord. Say, good morning, Lord. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for bringing me through the night. What would you have me do today? The daughters of the king and their motto say, Lord, what would you have me do? There's always something that the Lord will have us do. He has things gifted within us that we can do, a kind word, a prayer for someone. Just be open to how God is going to move through your life. So turn to the Lord. And then the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. Isn't that beautiful? So we are to be strengthened by that today. That's because of the season of Epiphany that we see God's glory being manifested. And it's manifested as he's up on the mountain with Peter, James, and John. And we can claim that testimony. We can claim the testimony of Moses' face shining with God's glory. And that gives us strength to journey with Christ to the cross. Verse 18 from 2 Corinthians 3. But we all with unveiled face, because we are looking at the Lord, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We want to be transformed. That should be the goal of every Christian. To not just have that pivotal moment and then go back the way things were. No. Find the Lord, see his glory, and then live into that. I had an experience, I was thinking about this last night, that I had an experience a few years ago that Charles and I went to Italy. We went to Assisi, so a home of where St. Francis carried out his message that God did through him. And while we were there, there was a church that had been turned into a museum, but for his glory. And in that museum, there is this six-foot life-size cross carved out of wood and it's very abstract, but powerful. As I encountered that, standing before it, we were encouraged to walk up to it, to touch it. And I was weeping that God spoke to me through that art, through that image of the cross. I will never forget that. And it has changed my life. God will continue to do that in our lives as we are open to it. That it's not just a one-time thing. It's not just at your baptism and then you go on. But the baptism is the gift of the Spirit. And then how do you live that out in your lives? So today, we are in journeying with Christ that we see the cross before us. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. What is God calling us to do? How do we respond to that? How are we strengthened by the season of epiphany of his glory to move with him towards the cross, to let things go that are distracting us from seeing him fully? And what do we need to pick up and gain in our lives to more fully see him? Maybe our time of prayer needs to be lengthened. Maybe our time of reading needs to be lengthened in the scriptures. Maybe our time spent with others or time in service. Whatever God speaks to you, take this day to talk to him about that. Be open to how he will speak to you and to prepare yourselves for the cross before us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you have done, the example that you have set for us, and how the Father has sent you into this world to teach us what it means to love, to love him and love others. And thank you for what it means to die for us, what you have done, and help each of us to embrace that journey, to die to ourselves so that we can live in you. It's in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen.
please stand.